Hi there, welcome back to the English class. Unit 6, Reading C. In the last video, we introduced ourselves to the concept of economic imperialism. How some economically forward countries were forcing poverty-stricken countries to bear the brunt of development for their selfishness. We saw the village of Koko in Nigeria being targeted all the waste, toxic waste from Italy was sent to be stored in the village of Koko, destroying the entire village and the people with it. Today, another sad tale of another village in India. Let's see what happened here. Remember, biodiversity is at risk. It's for us to learn how to prevent such mistakes from happening in future. A desert, a barren ground with no sign of life. Pony Manturi village in Kolkata. What happened? It was brought on national and international stage by Environment Protection Summit, by the reactionary NGOs. Why were they so troubled by this village? To protest against the inflow of chemicals that are used to process leather in the factory and it is mixed in the drinking water resources. So people began to cry out and say, look at what has happened to a village where the wastes of a leather factory were mixed into the drinking water resources, which is the source of life for that entire village. So this is another interview of a lady from that very village. Look at what she has to say. I can remember the time, she said wistfully, angrily, sadly, when all the fields around this village were green and the harvest good. She was remembering pleasantly those beautiful times. Her outstretched arm described a complete circle as she stood in the morning sun. Then they built those monsters those, she pointed out those chimneys of the factory that anyone could spot from far, far away, as there was nothing in between to hide the view. Her voice spluttered in anger. It came out in bursts of explosion. She shook her fist at a collection of ominous looking black buildings dangerous looking black buildings on the horizon covered in a low lying shroud of thick smoke that smoke was covering the area like a blanket they said that factories need leather to make shoes handbags and clothes they said our men folk would get jobs they said we would all become rich look at the kind of dreams they gave the village folk they said Hey, we're bringing jobs, we're bringing livelihood. But in the end, it just took lives. We'll see how. We stood silent, the narrator and the lady whom he's interviewing, each thinking our own thoughts. Yes, they told you all that. But there is so much they didn't tell you. They didn't tell you that to change animal skins into leather which they call tanning, uses as many as 250 different chemicals, including heavy metals such as cadmium, arsenic and chromium. These are the kinds of metals we have to stay as far away as possible. They are cancerous in nature. They didn't tell you that these chemicals are discharged into the environment from those chimney stacks and fall to earth for miles around polluting the earth below. If such cancerous metal elements fall on the ground, what will happen to the flora and fauna there and what will happen to the humans who depend on them? They didn't tell you that this would poison your fields so that nothing will grow. A farmer's livelihood is his field, his farm. What will happen to them if such extremely poisonous chemicals are let out 
every day into the very soil you want to plant life. They didn't tell us that the chemicals would be dumped in open fields and into our rivers, sighed Vijaya Sama. We had been thinking the same thoughts. The narrator, the interviewer and the lady, both of them thinking the same line of thought. They didn't tell us that our women would have to walk 10 kilometers every day. What will happen when the river in your area is polluted? You will have to go far, far off to fetch a sip of clean drinking water. They didn't tell us that we would get ulcers and sores in our body. They didn't tell us her voice trailed off. She didn't have words to express her misery. There is so much they didn't tell you, I thought, says the interviewer. We don't buy leather shoes or leather bags or leather clothes, she said. Leather spells death for them. The entire village lost its life just because of the selfishness of one person who wanted to set up a factory and gain profits. Putting up a factory, it's good. Yes, it creates jobs. Yes, it creates products. But then the responsibility that comes with it. What is that responsibility? Any, any factory has generates waste. It could be hazardous, it couldn't be hazardous. But handling that waste is the responsibility of that industry. The government has to make sure that if you're giving permission to set up a factory, you must know how to manage your waste. You cannot wipe out life around you just to make your life somewhere else. So managing leather industry waste is not as difficult as it, as it is being portrayed. Let's see how. Tannery waste, that is leather factory waste, can be effectively used in the construction field to create lightweight constructional materials. So all that has to be done is to spend a little extra money on transporting the waste that is generated to a particular environment, a controlled environment, where a treatment can be done to it to make use of it, to recycle it, rather than just dumping it on landfills and emptying into precious rivers. There is reduction in the cost of construction, isn't it so? If you have an alternative, a cheap alternative, an alternative that is coming out of waste, obviously the cost of construction will come down because the products that are being created for the purpose of construction are in cheap in themselves. So the cost of construction comes down and provides a new replacing material for the concrete. So usually we mix cement, sand, yeah? Instead of sand, if you can use tannery waste, you are saving all the rivers from where the sand is obtained. Tannery waste concrete, that means concrete that's made out of leather waste, leather factory waste, can reduce the river sand usage and result in lightweight concrete. So when concrete becomes lightweight, heavy machinery that carries heavy bricks of tons of cement, all that, everything comes down. It provides an economic value for waste material. Finding value in waste is the call of the, of the world right now. There is nothing called waste. Our humans have become so intelligent lately, research has progressed so much that everything can be recycled, reused. And so the same thing must be applied here. Usage of recycled materials can not only preserve the finite raw materials. River sand is finite. Someday it will finish. Then what? Recycling should start now in order to prevent that situation. It can also reduce energy consumption and overall construction costs. What is that energy consumption? Energy consumption that is that is used to create the final products used in construction. But if you're using waste products, the amount of energy consumed to make it recyclable is also unthinkably low. We have to realize that. 
So what is the objective of this chapter before we go to the glossary? The economies of the world must not be established on the bodies of innocent people. People's lives cannot be put at stake just because you want a flourishing industry. Progress should not come at the cost of, there are two wonderful words missing here, at the cost of our environment. Yes, at the cost of our environment, at the cost of our biodiversity, we don't want that kind of a progress, do we? Conservation of our biodiversity must be a part of business because it's everyone's business to keep our planet safe. So as you grow up to be adults, when you grow up to be businessmen, please take holistic approach when you're setting up industries. Our world is important because that's where you are trying to flourish. So let's flourish together. I'll see you soon in another video with another tale of another village. See you soon.